we're doing it. We're in it. So what's going on, man? How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Doing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Doing great. Doing great. Um, so I don't really know anything about you. All I know is that you're a Canadian actor. Andrew McKenzie Truth. on. Met and him in an acting class. Cool, He's man. a feder- fellow Albertan. Mm-hmm. He's a federal Albertan? Fellow Albertan. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your whole nation into All right, cool. Where are you from in uh, Alberta? Uh, I'm from Red Deer. You're from Red Deer? Red Deer, smack dab in the middle. Okay, sweet. Um, and you moved here for acting? Yeah. Sweet. But you acted in Alberta. Yes, yeah. I, uh, what kind of acting is in Alberta? No. <laughs> Fargo? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a few things. But ultimately, actually, you know what it was is like I, I booked Fargo and then I was like, oh, I'm hot shot. I can do whatever <laughs> I put my mind to. And so then I, I uh, moved out to Vancouver pretty much right after. Wait, wait you booked Fargo? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's, you, let, let's take it back. Yeah, hold Tell on a second. I don't know anything about you. So let's take it back to you don't look how, did you, how, did you get into, how did you get into acting in general? Okay, what I want to just give like an audience disclaimer first. That, <laughs> yeah, he's that sick as fuck. I'm, yeah, and so I'm going to sniffle. A, he's a and real and, and, and not sick as fuck as in like terms of acting. I'm sure you are sick as fuck in I mean, acting, but you're sick, like literally I'm, sick. You're ill. I'm like less of an You can't even say either or, like ill... Sick. Ill. You can't say. Ill. Oh yeah, ill. Deceased. <laughs> he's infirmed. No. Deceased. He's this in- guy is deceased, <laughs> man. And he's with it, man. Stopped. Now except for being dead cool. and all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So um, yeah, tell us about yourself, my friend. Acting journey. Take take us back. Yeah, take us back to the time the origin you started. Story. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> you do actually look familiar, though. Do we know each other before? Besides this, maybe. Do you know me? <laughs> no. Okay. I love that question though. I always story. ask that. <laughs> Whenever I like meet like sorry, a, a sorry. girl that I'm like that I, I feel like there's a vibe with. Yeah. I always ask her that. I was like, hey, do you recognize me? Because <laughs> You say like recognize? You say recognize? Yeah. Oh. That's could that, that that can come across as like I feel like if I say that's like an actor thing. Yeah, like hey, do yeah. you recognize me? Like, I'm pretty fucking big. An actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's easy slide to do. Yeah. <laughs> do we know each other? That's a good one. As I feel like if you're talking to a chick. Hey, do we do we know each other? <laughs> because I feel something. <laughs> I feel a connection here. Sorry, dude. Kate, wait, go on. What are you saying? Uh, yeah, so I started um, acting in junior high. We had what I realize now was like an improv thing, but it felt like it was super intense back then in grade seven. And uh, yeah, the basically people thought I was funny. And so I liked that. And it was all about me. And then <laughs> in like grade 10 or 12, something around there, I did this, this monologue where I, I played this mentally autistic guy and he was, uh, this was like kind of, yeah, it was a fucked up scene. Uh, but I, I grew up with, with people who were developmentally delayed my entire life. And so they were, they were like, my mom took care of them and stuff. So oh. having a character that I, kind of innately loved and that I had like a case study history built mm. in for already. That's cool. Meant that I got to do some work that I feel like was beyond my years. And, and that's when I realized that I love this stuff. Mm. Couldn't get away from it after that. So you kind of started off as like, you knew entertaining was kind of for you. It sounded like to me, like you entertaining, you're kind of entertaining people, whatever. And then you kind of got hit with this monologue and you're like, Oh, this is kind of something that I, I really enjoy out of, out of the entertainment yeah. field. This is something that I actually really enjoy. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's sweet. And then from there, what happened? So uh, I wasn't one of those people who like hummed and hawed about whether I should be an actor or not. It hummed was, and hawed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Zero <laughs> hummers and hawers. <laughs> I was like, ha. <laughs> 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 like no one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I went straight to uh, theater school after that. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually wearing the shirt for it today. Oh, Represents. Playhouse North <laughs> School of Theater. Fuck yeah. Was dude. that in yeah. Red Deer? That was in Calgary. Calgary. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist anymore. My <laughs> class shut that thing down. <laughs> um, but yeah. So How old were you when you did the, when you did? Uh, I guess 18, 19 and a bit of, no, yeah, 18, 19. So everyone's going to school for like, you know, probably like welding or, you know, trades or just oh, other yeah. jobs. You're kind of going to school for um, acting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, like my mom was the, the whole you know, figure something else out and yeah. and then of course. come back to acting after that. Yeah. But I, I, it didn't even register mm. for me, to be honest. Like I, I, 
I had zero concern. It wasn't until I came out here, like like a uh, a month or two into coming out here, that I I realized for the first time, like, oh, what if I didn't make it? <laughs> like, what if I wasn't like a successful actor? Mm-hmm. Because there, so many opportunities did really work out for me, and yeah, and uh, had like a really supportive upbringing and stuff, and so. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even a part of my my mental field at that mm-hmm. point. So up until so in Alberta doing theater school and everything, you were pretty confident. Yeah, yeah. There was mm-hmm. one other guy in my class that we kind of buddied up, um, knowing that the other guy was an inspiration for us. But uh-huh. but <laughs> like we we uh, yeah, it. I I knew that I stood out. In yeah, that skill mm-hmm. and what about uh coming to vancouver made you feel that way yeah, was there you? was there sorry sorry <laughs> okay. really the age of this. 18 we started school okay then you're yeah. 28 yeah. when you came out here i've done a decade of of acting now wait so you were yeah. doing you were doing um you were in theater since you're 18 to like 27 28 kind of thing no okay. i so that's I, what i'm saying there's an in-between gap there what happened what'd you do Did you sell cars um serving what'd you so do good ah, so good actually bring yeah. my fargo sort of yeah um, okay. So I did uh, two years of theater school and then two years of film school back in Red Deer. Mm-hmm. And then uh, actually I did like two and a half years of film. I just kind of like muddled with their program and made it how I wanted it to be. And then came out here after that. So I've been out here for about five years. Mm-hmm. Five years. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then your first big booking was? Yeah, Fargo. That was back... Um, Oh, no, my first big booking was I, I got this role as uh, uh, some of the alumni from my film school. They they came back and they were like, hey, we're going to pass the baton on. Mm-hmm. And, and any of you want to come and volunteer so that we don't have to pay anyone money to help for our movie project, then you can come on board. So I was like, I wanted to be a director's uh, assistant mm-hmm. in order to be able to get close to the action and see what he was doing. Cool. And... Uh, during the audition process, one of their lead actors ended up booking something else. And so then uh, I'd already expressed that I wanted to audition for that role. <laughs> and then they they let me audition nice. and they like drove from Edmonton to Red Deer to do the callback for me because I was this like college kid with no car. <laughs> and uh, yeah, booked this like supporting lead role on on a Hallmark film. And that was the very first thing. And then... Uh, Did it pay good? Uh, yeah, it felt like it paid really good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I want to do this all the time. <laughs> yeah. This is so easy. <laughs> and how long out of graduating... So the, did that happen while you were in film school? Yeah, that happened uh, my second year of film school mm-hmm. after the first semester. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so you're like, this acting thing, yeah, easy. I hadn't even left school yet. And I was already like, feel like I was, I was like where I should be or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and then Fargo is like the next, um, I don't know, like thing that actually got uh, published. That's not the right word, but. Published? Uh, released? Yeah. Good. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, and so did that. I think that was maybe a summer after getting out of film school. That's pretty wow. big, man. <laughs> and, you, yeah. and you got that in while you're still in Red Deer? This is happening? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, I was kind of going back and forth between Red Deer so and Calgary. You had, an, but you, had, yeah. you had an agent in Calgary then. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And he was, okay, that's crazy. I didn't know I didn't know acting was so big in Calgary. Oh, yeah, dude, you're, you're in Alberta. Fuck. Person. I think it's I bigger the wrong... than Edmonton for sure. I would hope yeah. so. There's nothing in Edmonton. Nothing. Yeah. You guys have theater, but. Yeah. Yeah, we have theater exactly, but besides that. Um, that's cool though, man. How pumped were you when you got Fargo? I didn't even know. That was the thing. Was I was like I was a little bit ignorant. I, I was very excited to do it. Um and uh I loved the role that I got to play, but I, I uh oh yeah, which I I played like a car salesman at one part. Oh that's so, hilarious. Yeah, funny. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh yeah. I, I think that I was a little bit unaware and I, and I totally squandered how good of an opportunity that was. What do you mean? <coughs> um, like you that's going to hurt for the mic. <laughs> yes, that's okay. We'll toss that mic in the garbage after this. Um, what do you mean it hurt? Uh, 
Yeah, this, the squandering? Yeah. <coughs> One moment. <laughs> also, whenever I get sick, my sinuses kick up enough that, like... You start to cry a little bit? Yeah. So if I'm getting emotional, <laughs> chances are... He's getting emotional, up. reminiscing about his early career. <laughs> yeah, I love it, dude. It's sick. <laughs> Yeah, I so once I came out to Vancouver, like fresh off of the Fargo thing, uh, got an agent out here and it was a great agent, um, and and got like some self tapes for for decent sized roles, and I didn't go and get coaching for them or anything, mm-hmm. and and I was entering a new market, and all of a sudden there was all these like like super attractive dudes, and that intimidated me because I. Uh, I was used to knowing everyone in the audition room and, mm-hmm. and to knowing how I stacked against them. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden there was all these guys that I didn't know and that I assumed were very, very good and were handsome as fuck. <laughs> and so uh, I let that get in my head. And, uh, but I didn't put in the work mm-hmm. that I should have given where my, my mentality was. And uh, I was just kind of like winging it and and fling in the skills that I'd learned without building into the skills. Hmm. Um, so it took me like uh, something like three years to actually get back into any kind of training, which uh, I think was dumb. Mm. Three did you, years. Did you kind wow. of think since yeah. you had done theater school and film school, that was like, check, totally. I'm a trained actor. I don't have to train again anymore. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it feels like it's see pretty that. rare out here for people to have like yeah. a significant amount of, of like... I guess formal training mm-hmm. like that. And so I, I totally thought that I had this, like this cap on that <laughs> no one else had. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was dumb. Well, that makes sense. So though, man. Check. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. No, definitely. So what did you do during, during those few years that you said you were feeling a little bit, a little bit discouraged? What were you doing for work and what, what helped get you, get you out of that funk? Um, Yes. Uh, at that point I was doing construction Mm -hmm. and, uh, Oh, you know what? Here's something I think is helpful. Um, I don't know what the, 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 like the mantra or the goal is of this podcast, but I feel like, you know what, to be helpful. I think so. I don't know. I think it's just to be, uh, I think just be you, bro. Just be you. All right. I'm going to be you so hard right now. (laughs) Um, So one of the things that, uh, I think really helped me back in Alberta was that I had a really good community around me of people that I was, I was willing to be open with. And when I came out here, it was really lacking community. Mm. And, uh, and it felt like a lot of the community that I did find was flighty and, uh, there's really in Vancouver, people were flighty. That's, I think I've it's just a me before. thing. I've never I, I heard that I, before. <laughs> just kidding. The problem is me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough place to make friends for sure. Yeah. The city's weird, kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. Everyone's so clicky into themselves, right? And flaky, yeah. flighty yeah. for sure. And there's a, a ton of like, but everyone. Here's the thing: is everyone in this city knows that. Yeah, mm-hmm. like everyone knows that everyone's weird and clicky in the city, right? So I always had this thing. I was at the beach one day. Mm-hmm. In the summertime, and there was this group of people, and I was like, "Man, they look, let's, you know, this looks like a good time to be. I want to be a part of this group, right?" <laughs> so I went up to this group, and I was like, "Hey guys, you know how people say like uh, people in Vancouver <laughs> are very clicky into themselves, and people are like nodding." I was like, "Yeah, well, this is me breaking the mold. What's up? I'm Zach." And uh, <laughs> it sounds really douchey, but it, it definitely worked. And I was just like, man, this is what you got to do. Everyone thinks this way. Yeah. So just just remind them how it is as an introduction, totally. and then introduce yourself. Were there some yeah. cute girls in that group? There was. <laughs> Which was definitely what? a factor. Which was definitely a factor. <laughs> so I, will, I will fight through yeah. the social, yeah. <laughs> social order in order to, to totally. bring me in this one particular group. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, how, did you, how did you find community? Were you intentional about it after that? Or did you think you found community out here? Um, Are we your only friends, dude? I <laughs> forget <laughs> <laughs> uh, <okay>, into it. <laughs> no, I think that that is still very much ongoing. Because mm-hmm. um, one of the things that I, I remember learning about community was that that community cannot thrive unto itself. That it has to be built around a purpose mm-hmm. that's beyond itself. And... I think that that's one of the big issues with Vancouver is that there's so many people who like 
you can find community within your workplace if you're passionate about what you're doing. And uh, you can find community through your schooling because, again, you're all growing together. You're mm-hmm. all, you have like a mutual suffering even. Yeah. But once you've moved beyond that and you have all these like entrepreneurs who are uh, like purposefully independent in a way mm-hmm. um, and put high stock on independence... Uh, then there's not as many places to build community that isn't just like, Hey, let's go for a beer. Um, so I, I do have like a men's group I'm a part of and, uh, it's, it's, uh, the purpose of it is like high challenge, um, accountability and, uh, and, yeah, being vulnerable and being open with each other, and so, so sharing cool. what's going on in our lives. And well, hold on a second, I, I want to pump the brakes here. Sorry, yeah, I had to it. cut you off. What do you mean a men's group? What's that? Excellent. Uh, so we like call, a Facebook group? You mean? No. Uh, Can I join this group, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Um, okay, but it's a group. <laughs> There are, there are, uh, there's like a, so it's called the huddle, um, or that's what we call it. Uh, but, uh, this, this one, it's, is basically like a, a group of guys that, uh, well, all the things I just said, um, more or less, all of us are coming around because, uh, of a mutual like Christianity uh-huh. or like, I mean, maybe a better way of saying it is that like we are all intrigued and or love Jesus and we want to lean into that. Okay. And, uh, so yeah, this, this, this group is formed around that and we, we meet like once a week and, uh, and talk about like the Bible and stuff. Not really, not a ton of that. Okay. Um, m- because there's other avenues for that. It's more so, uh, sharing what's going on in our lives and asking the question, uh, uh, what do we think that God is, is like trying to get through to us at this point and how can we take action on whatever that is? And it's kind of a continual process of asking that question again and again, Mm -hmm. because if you follow through on it, then something new is going to come up. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's, but yeah, it's this like group of, seven of us or eight okay yeah cool man i mean yeah that's sweet i think that like it's important to have some kind of group right that's kind of how i feel about like um you're right there, yeah <laughs> i'm just, I'm just <laughs> having some mic issues <laughs> here flip it up like this it's gonna have it set up for you wow yeah. thanks <laughs> um that's sweet though man that's uh i mean i think it's important to have any kind of group of of community and just people around you that's kind of like why I like um i don't know acting class yeah. i have a few buddies i go to the gym with like it's, it's just nice to kind of surround yourself with people like that right mm-hmm. whatever, whatever it is you know um you know obviously yours is around christianity or whatever or mm-hmm. catholic or whatever well so why can't i join this group though is it because i'm not christian enough what is it? I don't even know, man I, okay. don't, I don't know what your, what your faith <laughs> is but uh no it, it's uh, we've all committed to going to this thing for a year oh, at okay. least. And, uh, and some of the, ex- like we haven't had anyone come. W- there was one time like our, our mentors, like guest speaker came in. Oh, okay. Um, I get it. And, uh, but yeah, I guess the idea of it is that you, people will only be willing to be so vulnerable if there's constantly a new person coming in. Yeah. And that's a good point. It's true hey? though. Yeah. yeah. If you're wanting really to, point. Continue to build that intimacy and depth, then, then, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it being open. Do you feel, that. yeah, do you feel like re- refreshed afterwards? Like when you, when you yeah. leave there, do you feel like, whew, like that was, I needed to get that off my chest or whatever? Yeah, dude, even listening to someone else's stuff. Really? Yeah. Like I think it, in some ways it's like, it's kind of like AA or like, I was going to say, I'm picturing yeah. like a bunch of people in the middle and then someone has the ball and they stand up and they talk and then they, yeah, very formal like and throw the ball, <laughs> right? You know? Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah, uh, I think that that people in AA are are just like f- so lucky that that is that it has been recognized that, that was that would be something that would help them because mm-hmm. uh, the rest of us all need that too. Yeah. Wh- to whether our addiction is obvious or not, yeah. that we're all relying on on one weird crutch or another. And That's so true. If we don't have a, a venue to talk, then we're screwed. Like That's kind of, it's. I mean, essentially what you have going on is you have a therapist, essentially, yeah, with a group of guys. Group therapy. Group therapy. Yeah. 
I'm yeah, into that, man. Yeah. I've been I've been looking into like therapy the last little bit. It's, How'd it be? Yeah. It's really expensive though. Yes, that's yeah, the unfortunate thing. That like, is, I would like to find like maybe you know I'll give you thirty bucks and we'll just chat. You know, thirty dollars for you know a minute yeah. or whatever <laughs> or uh, thirty if minutes. Like, if, yeah. you if you can't give me like yeah. the high tier advice, you know, just give me the kind of yeah. shitty advice. Can you give me some? Uh, just steer it's me all away from fucking my life. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm you no know, seriously though. I am I am kind of looking for something like that because like recently I <clears throat> went through like a a breakup with uh, this girl I was dating for so long. Mm-hmm. And just like, you know, whatever it was, it was normal, you know, it was a normal breakup and whatever it is, but it's weird, man. There's still some things about like my past of like other girlfriends I've dated and I'm fucked up, man. I need a, I need a therapist to like, kind of like just talk to, I feel like weekly. Um, yeah. I started like journaling, um, like cool. once a week or a couple times a week now, just like when I'm feeling like down or really, mm-hmm. really motivated, I'll write down what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, before I was just writing down like what I was like really uh, pumped about and like what I, when I was only feeling like super motivated, oh, really? I'd write in my journal. Huh. But then I was looking back at my journal, I was like, oh, I'm just like, this is like a, it's like a fake Instagram. It's like I'm only yeah, looking at positive oh, catch. It's That's I'm only looking at positive stuff. So I was like, okay, good I need to start man. writing when I'm down. And unfortunately, when I'm down, I don't want to write. So I force myself to write. And now it's kind of cool. I'm seeing patterns of certain things like, oh, weird. Mm. You know, know oh this is interesting this is yeah. making me feel good like how did I feel when the Joker movie came out right mm, you know like okay. how did I actually yeah. feel as a person when that came out and when I watched that and like all these kinds of things right so I want to bring this journal and just share it with a person or someone that can like be, be like, like fix me yeah here you go <laughs> look how fucked I am here this is it. I wrote it all down for you <laughs> it should be right? easy for you 30 yeah. bucks that's it <laughs> I titled the chapter so. yeah, totally. it's so funny that you only write when you're down or uh, up because I only would write well, when I'm would. down Oh, you only write when you're down. Yeah. I just have no motivation to write when I'm down. Yeah. I'm like, I need to like get this shit out. That's cool you know? though. Yeah. <laughs> Do you find that for yourself? It's like, is it cathartic or yes. is it to the writing of it? Yeah. It's cathartic. yeah. Yeah. Cathartic is writing. Er, definitely. I've, I've even, if I've even had uh, instances like I got into a weird fight with my mom a couple weeks ago and I wrote her a letter that I never sent. Mm. Like, so I'll do that. And then I'll kind of talk about some of the things that I wrote down, but I'll just write a letter if I was being completely like brutally honest, writing Mm. it out. So then that's just out. You know what I mean? Like not inside of me. And then I feel like once I get those strong emotions out, then I can talk to her and more with more clarity, you know, and from like a less emotional place. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you, are you a verbal processor? Yeah. What's that? Oh yeah. What's that mean? Like when you, th- you have to, th- you think through conversations. I, yeah. Like you learn what you believe through speaking. Kind of, I guess. I mean, it's kind of what we, st- I mean, that's why I like this, this co- mm. like kind of podcast and stuff like yeah. that. Right. It kind of forces to have like a conversation between a few cool people and stuff and kind of learn about someone. And there's something about when you talk to someone, um, how it changes your day. Dude, every time I do a podcast, every single time I do one. I don't know about you, Anna, but yeah, I, f- I feel good too. I feel fucking great. Dude, this yeah. is this is your group therapy. This is right? my group yeah. therapy, dude. This yeah. is it right here. Yeah, let <laughs> me get some more mics going on here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, it's uh, it, it's definitely interesting. I'm always sketched out. People seeing my journal. It's weird yeah. that I even, dude. If you asked me this a year ago, a journal, I would have called you a pussy. Dude, I love that. What is that? Like a journal of awesome progress. And now way. you're talking about it on yeah, a podcast yeah. for other people. Yeah, yeah. It's hashtag like, growth. Yeah, a- yeah. Hashtag growing up here. But <laughs> yeah, man, like I used to, like when I would hear people, and I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't like really think that, but I'd just be like, oh, like, you know, weak minded. Or I would just throw something like yeah. dish it up to just being like, oh, like he's just not there yet, or she's not there yet. Huh. And then fast forward a couple of years, and I'm just here I am journaling. Like the fact that I say that I have a journal. It, it's weird for me to hear that out loud, to be honest, yeah. but it's what you call it. That's what it is. It's a book of <laughs> yeah. thoughts. So it's a journal, um, but I'm always sketched out. Someone's going to pick that book up and read it. I, I thought that too. Yeah. I'm always I've, sketched out. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> we're putting it on paper for someone to find. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of when you were talking about your, uh, the mom letter one where it's yeah. like, okay, so like <laughs> down the road, whatever, mm-hmm. like when each of us dies, and then someone comes across these papers and like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, why, man. why are there like all of these letters like yeah. saying like, I want to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this never came up. <laughs> yeah. Is this is how she really felt the whole time. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird, man. It's a weird, uh, it's a weird thing that we do, but it, Hey, it I, works. I used to censor myself actually. Huh. I'm better at it now, uh-huh. but like years ago when I would journal, I would definitely censor myself. I'm like, Oh no, I can't put that shit down. What if somebody read that? Dude, me too. Yeah. <laughs> seriously. I, 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 I yeah. still kind of do that. I'm like, 
I'm just like, eh, maybe I won't put that in there because <laughs> someone will pick it up. It's like, that thing that <laughs> happened is really affecting me today. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> wink, wink. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Inside jokes with your yeah. own journal. Yeah, exactly. Inside jokes with yourself. <laughs> Uh, that. That's hilarious, actually. <laughs> what uh, do you do for self care? Well, he does the besides the that group. Uh, okay, that group doesn't count. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, just on your own. What What do you do? You work uh, out, dude. Not for a while. Exercise in any way? Yeah, like I, that's definitely helpful. And when I do it, it's good. Um, but uh, I was I was dedicating all my time recently to a hobby, which. It wasn't like, so for, for, uh, Hey guys, quick little advertisement here, project transformation X, which is a personal training and an online personal training business. I started a few years back. I love fitness. I've been doing fitness for the last 10 years. It's something that is a passion that I dearly have, uh, with acting as well. Um, and I am taking on a few online clients. So what you'll be receiving is you will be receiving a fitness program that is tailored to you. It comes with video and detailed explanation on how to do each exercise. You will also be receiving a nutrition program from me that comes with foods you should be eating and how you should be feeling throughout the day so we can get you to your goal the best way possible. You will also be receiving weekly communication from me as your online trainer via Skype or Google Hangouts. And I do ask for a two month commitment. Back to the show. My scene in class this Mm -hmm. month, uh, I am driving a car. And so I made myself a steering wheel and like I went to the junkyard, bought a steering wheel and then I like cool. crafted together, did like the woodwork to, uh, this is going to be hard to describe for the visually impaired. Um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, made the thing for the steering wheel to go into. So right. I turned, I had like a turn signal thing attached, it took a long time, like way longer. I spent more money on it than I should have, but I had, I did not pull that mic closer to your face. I did not realize. There you go how much it was going to like improve my quality of life making this thing. Really? And so I, I, I was like on a bit of a deadline and so I wasn't working out or anything instead. But yeah, I, and I, I need a hobby as well. I've well, dude, discovered. Tony <laughs> Robbins talks about motion. You know, Tony Robbins, he's like yeah. this like self-help big motivator. Hands. Big hand guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, <laughs> big, yeah, he's a, he's, he's a, he's really about, um, motion is emotion. So whether you're working out or you're doing like you going to the junkyard and getting this thing and like putting it together, like that makes you feel good doing because you're, things with your you're hands, you mean? just doing things in general. I mm-hmm. think like motion is emotion. So whatever it is that makes you feel good, just, just do it, man. Because when you, when you want to do something and, and you, you're too lazy to do it, that's when you start to get depressed. That's how I, f- mm-hmm. that's how I find myself and I have a lot of clients that are the same way that I'm a personal trainer, by the way, that's kind okay. of what I do inside. I have a lot of clients that sometimes they, they just don't get to the gym and they're just feeling depressed. And it's like, trust me, if you would have just got your ass to the gym, yeah. we could have turned this around for you. You know what I mean? Or that's one of the starter things that we could do to turn this around. It's interesting though, man. It's kind of weird how that works, you know? Hmm. What yeah. I like about that too is that like when, uh, if you were ignorant to the fact that you needed to go to the gym or that that was going to be helpful, then I don't think it would lead to the depression. I think it's because we, when we know that there's a helpful thing like that, the whole ignorance is bliss. I think comes straight from that, that it's, it's in the knowing that the weight is like dropped. Mm -hmm. That it's like, Oh, I'm not taking care of myself. I'm not respecting myself right now. And how can you feel anything but depressed if you like know that you're doing that to Mm -hmm. yourself? Right. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's crazy, but you should definitely start working out if you don't. Yeah. You love it, man. And I'm not saying like hit weights and stuff like that. Just go for a run, dude. Start moving, get them in the morning. Just start fucking moving around. Like you'll love it. It's a yeah. good, it's a good, no, it's really good. Fully with you. Zach yeah. gave me my first session yesterday. Yeah, we did yesterday? leg day. Yeah. yeah. We worked out yesterday yeah. together. <laughs> What'd you think of it? You liked it? Yeah. That's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I was uh, fitter than he thought I was. He didn't think I was going to be able to keep up, did you? I did. No, you didn't. You <laughs> told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was good though. You, you walked in here. I didn't even notice you like a weird kink in your steps. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bow legged today. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, if you ever want to like work out or something, let me know. I'll help cool. you out. Yeah, yeah good to know. I, I, I want to help all these actors. A lot of actors I find um, in the city that I that I meet. Um, I mean, it just I, that's I'm meeting actors because that's kind of like what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of them work out. I noticed that. That surprises me. Yeah, it surprises me too. Actually, like a lot of people don't. 
work out in, in the arts, I guess the art artistic side of Vancouver. You know, what's bizarre about that too, is that it's like, uh, like back in theater school, we did, we did dancing, we did breath work, right. mm-hmm. all of this stuff. And, uh, but equally, so I, I uh, when I'm not acting, I'm, I'm doing grip work on set where I'm on the crew side. Um, and the grip job is, uh, someone who is kind of like sometimes is a gopher, but like sets up a lot of equipment, have to move heavy things. Mm-hmm. And I find even that like having to use my body for a job, building that like physical awareness, same kind of stuff that you get, like doing weight training and, and like body confidence kind of stuff that comes from that. Um, all of that body awareness is huge for like me mm-hmm. understanding what the hell's going on in my gut when I, when I like, I'm uh, trying to suppress an emotion or when I'm uh, when I'm not understanding why I can't connect to a character because it's like, well, I'm not moving like them. Mm-hmm. And like without without actually using your body and like putting your body into play, how the hell are you supposed to exactly. ever figure out acting? Exactly, like, dude. Seriously. Just totally like working out your eyebrows, <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's the same thing really, right? Acting, how you're training every single week, you're in class, you're, you're stretching that muscle, you're flexing that emotional mm-hmm. muscle, whatever it is you're doing yeah. in acting. It's the same thing you do in the gym. I started thinking about my time in the gym as an act, an acting related task too. hundred yeah, percent is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it definitely is. I, I even feel like after I've worked out in the gym, I don't know, you just get things flowing and I find that I'm able to access emotion. Yeah. Like you said, I'm mm. able to access emotions easier. Cause I don't feel as like, I don't know, maybe trapped in my body. Mm. I don't know if that makes any sense, but you know, you just get things moving. Does yeah, that make sense? Yeah. To you? you feel More loose. Power. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, feel loose. loose. And, and yeah. I think mm. what the wording is, is you just mm. feel confident. Mm. Yeah. You just feel confident. Like you're able to do things. You're confident about what choices you make. You're just like, that's what the gym we should just, this episode should just be called go to the gym. But, um, that's what the gym does, man. It just makes you go to the gym, find a community. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do something. You don't want to go to the gym. You end up going to the gym. You feel good about going to the gym. Therefore your whole day is just about that. Well, I went work. I'm trying to do, I, uh, I was talking to my friend the other day. I'm like, let's just try and do things that we don't Things that we know we won't regret after, like the gym. Huh. You've never come back from the gym being like, fuck, I shouldn't have gone to the gym. Like, <laughs> you never said that. Hours. Like, That's no, so like nobody says that, That's right? true, actually. So just try and do things that when you're done, you're not like, fuck, I shouldn't have done that, you know? <laughs> Where did this stem from? It's very long-term living. Um, I think I smoked a joint and was just thinking. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> smoked a joint, she got too high, she was like, you know what, I just, I should have done that. <laughs> no, see, I should have done that because then oh. it led to that thought. Something you never ah, regret. Now I'm making healthier habits. Ah, there you like. go. <laughs> I like how you think. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, we're getting a little sidetracked here, though, so I want to know more okay. about you. Um, so real quick here, you booked Fargo, you told your mom, hey, look, mom, I'm actually... Shut I'm, up, mom. Shut up, mom. I'm actually doing acting. <laughs> I'm a big-time actor, mom. I'm doing it. It's, it's I'm going big. Uh, you moved to Vancouver when you were 28 years old. No. Uh, yeah, when I was like 22. Oh, you moved to Vancouver when you were 20, 20. He's 28. Oh, you're 28 now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, and then, so you were just kind of, you've been here because of Fargo, Right. Be- yeah. Kind of right. Cause you kind of, re- yeah, that's totally how I got you had my momentum agent off that. Yeah. 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 And Absolutely. so did you get an agent in Vancouver like by choice or was someone like, Hey, you need to go to Vancouver if you want to continue doing this. Uh, my acting teacher back in film school, he was like, Andrew, if I see you again here, like in a couple months, I'm going to punch you in the bum or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to slap your ass. Andrew. <laughs> 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 I'm going to grab your ass. Very supportive. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Sorry. Before (laughs) me too. I made that weird. That was my bad. He doesn't deserve that. He's very, he's he's a good dude. All right, cool. Um, And uh, yeah, so, but I definitely got the vibe that that if I was going to be taking my career seriously, this is where I needed to Mm -hmm. be. And also I was afraid of coming out here. And a lot of times in my life, I've kind of looked at fear as being like, okay, well, that's where I got to go then. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I forget your question now. Well, just, so when you booked Fargo and you ha- felt like you had this momentum coming and your acting teacher's like, you need to go to Vancouver, two things here. How did you feel when you moved to Vancouver? Like how did, like moving by yourself, like you moved here without knowing anyone. It sounds like you kind of came here. Like, how was that? Man? That's, that's obviously a big thing. Yeah. I think actually even like 
so I, I had one of, one of my best friends from theater school. She was out here. And, uh, and then I moved out here uh, right around the same time as, as my now roommate. Uh, he, he and I did a, a short film together when we were in Alberta and, and, uh, so we ended up roommating up when we got out here and, uh, been together ever since. That's so nice to have that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, but with like the, the, the friend out here still awesome friend, but I think that there was like mentally, uh, I wanted to lean on her and her friend circle more than was a good idea because uh-huh. I was like looking for that community, looking for a, a place to belong. Um, but wasn't like, wasn't making my own community. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I get it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I think I was still riding the, the like life high of, of feeling like, I, I couldn't be stopped really. And the, the idea of failing was still foreign enough to me that, um, that, yeah, it didn't even, uh, compute that, mm-hmm. that something was starting to go wrong as, as all of my momentum was slowly lagging away. Cool, man. That's sweet. I yeah. like that. What's your relationship with failure now? The great. Question. Wow. <laughs> Co-host. <laughs> <laughs> what is my relationship with failure? Um, that's such a good question because I, uh, this is going to sound, uh, pretentious in some ways. Uh, so I'm, I am a bit of a perfectionist mm-hmm. and, uh, which so there's this thing called the Myers Brig. Yeah. No, yeah. Sorry, yeah. not that one. The <laughs> other one. Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Text it to Sagittarius. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moon sign star. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forget what it's called. Um, but but it kind of like, it has a breakdown of a bunch of personality things. But it's mm-hmm. it's kind of almost more to do with your soul, um, and and because apparently your Myers Briggs one can change over time. Yeah. But this one is more to do with like the cause, and then the Myers Briggs might be the effect mm-hmm. of that particular time. And, uh, so in, in this other one, um, I'm, I'm the perfectionist. And so a lot of times I, uh, I, I'm trying to remember what I actually learned about this. I, I feel like I, failure is sort of still something that I'm foreign to mm-hmm. because, uh, a lot of times I know that I'm going to succeed and I haven't had a lot of times where I have failed. Um, like I, I haven't had a whole lot of like, I don't get embarrassed easily. I, I have always been someone that like I, I'm good at learning specifically. And so I can adapt and figure mm-hmm. stuff out as I'm going. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess failure is something that I probably need to do more of. Like I, I think that they're, oh, for instance, improv has been something that's always frightened me and talking earlier about like Uh, diving into the fears. It's one that I haven't uh, dove in, dove into, dived into into. (laughs) and, uh, yeah. And I absolutely know that I could grow so much if I did improv Mm -hmm. because I'm afraid (laughs) of, of how easily I could uh, fail time and time again that I'd have to fail a lot in order to be good at that one publicly. Uh, yeah, that's my relationship with failure. <laughs> complicated. It's, it. it's complicated. <laughs> oh, it's complicated, man. <laughs> I wouldn't know what the fuck to say if someone asked me that. <laughs> uh, you should definitely do improv, man. It's sweet. I did it for like four or five months. It was, oh, yeah? it was a good time. Definitely, dude. It's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I love people that do improv. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, they're like, 
just innately attractive humans. Yeah. And it, it's, it's cool. Cause it makes you just so witty and quick and it's fun. Right. And it's like, you know, one's judging you and you're just able to speak on your mind and yeah. you just get crazy. And it's cool. As like an audience member, you love it when they, Oh, I love it. Oh, like, yeah. dude, you love it if they succeed, you love it if they fail. It's, so true. it's such it's a greatest great, thing ever. Yeah. It, it kind of like, it does take judgment of the equation. As long as they're Unless going you say for it. Super creepy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Or as long as they're going for it, if they're kind of halfway, well, that's like it, anything. Not, that's like anything in the yeah. arts though. If someone's like yeah. half ass going for it, yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right. Like you see it in class, right? You see someone yeah. like in acting class and they're just kind of like talking or, or whatever they're doing their scene and they're kind of like, not really like, they're like, this is kind of, this is, it's like, no, it's not ridiculous. All right. Like just commit dude. Like, yeah. cause it kind of looks, it just, it looks so, it's so awkward if you don't, <clears throat> at least that's how I feel about it. Yeah. yeah. Whatever that quote is about like <clears throat> a bigger mistake to not be memorable. <laughs> Yeah. What's that? What's that quote? I don't know. That's not really a good quote. <laughs> I kind of threw it. You can't at be you pulling out half the quote. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Great> quote. Half <laughs> the quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's sweet, man. That's cool. So what's uh, what's going on with you right now? You're uh, you're thriving in the industry. What's going on? Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm actually making strides. There was a long. And what was long the change? What was the change? Do you think? Um. We can edit out some of this pause afterwards. Definitely not. <laughs> this <laughs> is unedited, I ain't, unscripted. I ain't ed- yeah, I ain't editing shit. <laughs> 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 I mean, it kind of sounds like you kind of just like grew up a little bit, right? It sounds like you kind of just like were you kind of fit in your own shoes more and you were more comfortable and you're just grown as a person. I feel like that's kind of like what it was. Just, just talking to you. I don't know you a hell of a lot, but it sounds like that's what it was. I definitely like your rendition of it. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Some, some of what happened in like, uh, fuck it's, it's all the things that, that like that actors already know they get told the time and time again, but like making it more about my partner and, uh, uh, letting go of more. And Oh, a big one for me was just weird. Like I, being a pretty like uh, up in my head kind of guy um instead of planning pre-planning blocking out in my head before doing it just actually doing Mm. um stuff and then letting it letting myself figure it out in the moment like in the middle of the scene like just trusting that you'll kind of figure it out yeah yeah like not having like all the marks down and like okay this is this is how it has to go like something like that you mean well even like uh like story-wise like like under if if I understand the story well enough and the dynamics of what's happening between the people, then I I can uh, if if I'm on the opposite side of the room. Like sometimes it's it's weird. You see an actor get totally hung up on the fact that they're on the wrong side of the room and they completely threw out the window what it was that they were doing mm. because they were on the wrong side of the room. But in reality, like if if in real life you're on the wrong side of the room, then we all. No, like you, you just keep on going. It, it just, it's so I'm weird that, guy. that it's a hang I'm up. that guy. Yeah. Dude, if I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay, camera's on this side. All right, I'm training right here. And then all of a sudden the camera's on this side. I'm like, oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to need to go home yeah, for 15 minutes. I got to come back, yeah. So, so. so what do you, what's your process? What do you do so then when you're on the wrong side of the room, you don't lose it? Uh, I guess that's where uh, it being more about the other person has actually been helpful. Mm -hmm. And also trusting that like, uh, I think I I always, when someone told me that, like when someone would tell me that I was too much in my head as an actor, I think that, that I thought that I had to completely let go of that and like do all of my head work outside of the scene so that in the scene I could just feel. Yeah. But, um, the reality is, is like, I, we're all thinking on a day to day basis. And so, I should be able to like uh, think and problem solve my way on the spot too. And letting myself take that risk kind of felt like improv in some ways where it's like, yeah, yeah, you're letting yourself actually live in the moment and, and problem solve whatever's going on. Cause like most of the time it's like, you're the scene is about some kind of conflict, some kind of problem. Yeah. So I'm doing that anyway, might as well figure out how to get on the other side of the room in a way that makes sense. Like, yeah. And, uh, what kind of, what kind of homework do you do before a scene? 
Um, uh, yeah, I guess it kind of depends on what the scene is. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you for the scene that I'm working on this month. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll <laughs> stand in front of the mirror and and try to figure out the like the physicality, like w what way I can move um, that starts to feel like something or what way I can groom my eyebrows <laughs> that feels like it's more like the character. Mm. Um, I love costume stuff. I've, uh, that affects me. Um, and uh, I just read the script a lot because I want to make sure that I understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, do you do a lot uh, of writing? Uh, I've, I've tried that like in order if, if I, if more so like if it's like an emotional scene, mm -hmm. I try that. I don't find that like if, if it, so, uh, th this is an area I'm still definitely growing in and, and struggling in. And mm -hmm. so, uh, I find sometimes it, it'll be like a one-off where like the writing worked because <laughs> the specific way that my partner did it that time, it was like, Oh, that triggers that exact thing that I wrote about. Yeah. And then you feel so empowered in that moment. But then mm -hmm. the next time it's like, they do it slightly different. And it's like, Oh, no, that didn't really. And you're also already thinking about it now. You're like, Oh, this is the part where they're going to trigger me. Yeah. And, and, uh, so I, I need to learn something in that area that I haven't figured out yet. Yeah, I struggle with that too. There's some scenes that I've, I, I kind of try different approaches each each month, like slightly different approaches to see what sticks. But there is no one size fits all for every scene, right? Because I'll yeah. do some scenes where I'll yeah do the same thing you do and read them, read it over and over again and try and meditate on it. And then I did that one month and it clicked. And then I did that the next month and I should have done way more. I should have done the writing. Like I know it would have helped me if I would have done it in that scene. So I think it's, yeah, I don't, I don't know what, when you, sh when you could know to do what, but I think that's definitely something I want to figure out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hey, I got a, sorry, mm -hmm. quick question for you, man. You know, you said you were like, you don't really uh, get embarrassed really by yeah. what people, whatever it is. Do you think that stems from, um, you just like letting loose in scenes? Like, do you think that's kind of like where it stems from? Uh, the reason I'm asking is yeah, because I've it. noticed a lot since I've done improv and, um, acting and I used to make these comedy sketches on Instagram and put them out there and I just didn't give a, I just almost like trained my brain not to give a fuck what people thought about me. You know what I mean? I kind of just kept putting stuff out there and the more I would just put out there, the more I was like, I know people are judging me, but I just like, I want to just absorb it. And like, I don't care. So I'm wondering for you, like you don't get embarrassed that easily. I'm wondering if that's the same thing for you. Like what does it, does it stem from acting? Yeah. Yeah. I bet. I, bet, I, I bet think so. Yeah. It's like we had this mantra in theater school where we'd be like, uh, there's this whole like hand thing that went along with it too, but we'd say prepare to suck. And <laughs> what does it say? What is it? What? Prepare to suck. <laughs> it would be prepared to suck. Who? Right. And <laughs> we would send each other off with that kind of mantra cheer um, when when one of us was going up and doing a scene, um, because the the idea was similar to some of the stuff we've talked about already. That like go up there and fail boldly, and and you're gonna learn. Um, love the whole like you can't learn and look good at the same time kind of mentality. And I think that. There's a lot of, in between that and, and trying to dive into fears, a lot of times it's like embarrassment. Also, I love awkwardness. So much of my brand <laughs> is, is being awkward. And so like, I feel like I'm well versed in how to ride the line of awkwardness, uneasiness, um, whether it's dramatic or if it's comedic. Mm -hmm. And because of that, uh, it, it kind of, uh, embarrassment, um, I think in, in, I, I don't mean, I, I know that there are triggers for me, uh, th things that would embarrass like me. Like everyone, like everyone. Yeah. But most of the time it's like, you can totally, uh, adapt your way out of embarrassment, even in the moment. Like, like if I'm feeling confident and, and like on my game or whatever, then someone can, uh, I, I admitted something to a friend uh, two days ago, which I, we're not going to spend enough time for me to like try to like weasel my way out of being a weirdo <laughs> by me talking about it now. But like, um, I, 
I admitted something that I've held shame over in my life. Um, and I've tried to figure out like what's going on with me that this happens. And, uh, and I said it to her in a way that was kind of blase and like not super worried and, and told her why I think I do this thing. And, uh, what was remarkable about it was that like this thing that I've carried shame over, uh, became, uh, kind of a moot point. And it was like, sure, that's weird, but it's still Andrew. Um, and it was more about how I was approaching it than, than, uh, the topic matter itself. And I think that acting can kind of do that. Like you, you start to see characters from different angles that, that, uh, that we don't normally allow, we don't give the same uh, courtesy to ourselves a lot of the time as what we give to characters that we portray that, that we'll see, like we understand why a character is coming from a certain perspective because of their backstory. Whereas for ourselves, maybe we're just so inundated with our own backstory that, that we don't understand why we're lashing out in some kind of weird way. But, but yeah, we, uh, we, do do weird things and there's a reason why and i think acting has helped me to empathize more and the more that i understand my own story the more that i understand other people's story and it kind of like all goes into this cycle that yeah. i think really has done it's, it's weird yeah it's weird how like just performing can do that to you yeah this is why i recommend everyone whether you're absolutely if you're not into acting or film and tv you probably don't listen to this podcast, but like if you're not into it, do it, man, because Take an improv some class. kind of, some kind of thing. Yeah, I think improv class would be the funnest mm-hmm. to do if you're not into acting at and all. Probably the most helpful, but well, I don't know about that. I think so. Following really? your imp- through with your impulses and the embarrassment and learning to fail and just washing it away and doing the next thing. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think improv would be, I, um, whatever, either or like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Because like when I was take, when I when I did improv, I found acting to be a lot more. Um, I feel like you get more of your soul in there. I just felt a lot more, more like, ooh, like I just felt a lot more like, hey, here we go with this. Now with this, this is how right. I have it planned. Oh, you're not doing it properly. Let's fix that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was a lot of that. Whereas mm-hmm. improv was, I guess for some people, I think improv is just easier for, than others. Yeah. Whereas improv for me, I'm not saying I was good at it. I just mean it was it was easy for me to say what's on my mind. I don't really care what people are thinking about me or whatever it is. Right? I can kind of just. Yeah, I do. Like, you know what I mean? Whatever it is, right? Mm. But yeah, any kind of art or improv or whatever it is, I think everyone should do some kind of form of that. It would help with your job. It would help you as a person. It would just help with so many things, man, because being embarrassed or um, letting people judge you and and you feeling a certain way or um, just being like vulnerable in that kind of situation, I think is kind of... Uh, it's a skill that you need to just like, okay, to relate this to the gym again, but it's kind of a skill that you need to flex constantly to overcome that feeling. Yeah. And I think you overcome that feeling is such a, is such a good skill to have. Yeah. That's why I think it is important to stay in constant training because if you're not in the audition room, then you're not going to be training that feeling. Seriously. And yeah. then next, if you have a little bit of a lull in auditions and don't audition for a month, then next month, it's almost like you're starting not like right at the beginning, but a little bit like that. Hey, yeah. did, have you found that if you haven't auditioned for a while, you're like, <laughs> yeah, you get those nerves that you did, like that familiar feeling that you got the first time that you're auditioning. You like yeah. need, you need to keep that up for sure. <laughs> yeah. So much feels like it rides on it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like if it's in a whole slew of auditions, you're like, ah, well, I'll just try this weird yeah. thing in this one and I'll <laughs> screw the pooch in this other one. Yeah, Totally. That's kind of like why the taking class is so important. Yeah. Cause it's kind of like flexing that muscle like constantly. Right. Yeah. Um, well, Andrew, I just want to say, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. This has been a good time. Good chat. Uh, mm-hmm. It's good knowing you, man. I think that you're a, uh, you're an awesome dude. Thank you. Uh, I definitely think that we should work out together. Okay, yeah, maybe. All right, cool. We'll <laughs> put, 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 put a pin in that. Um, yeah, do you want to plug anything? Or you got anything you want to let uh, people know of? Da, da, da. Um, nah, 
No, not really. <laughs> what well, your know. social media? Plug that at least. <laughs> Andrew Neil McKenzie is my Instagram. I don't really <laughs> well, we'll, do we'll, a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a I'll check out my IMDb yeah, page. Yeah, there you go. It has facts on <laughs> that's, it. That's, it has facts. <laughs> that's where he, that's where he shines. I'll put all that stuff in the description for you, buddy. Don't worry about it. Um, cool, man. Okay, well, thanks for on the show. Thanks, Appreciate Andrew. it, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.